Hello, welcome to Revenant Reads. I'm Vin, and today I have a library book sale book haul. So one of my favorite things usually to do over the summer is to go to all the library book sales and just stock up on books super cheap. Um, unfortunately, mostly due to COVID, uh, most of those library book sales have not come back um, yet. Uh, there was one that did happen uh, near me. That's a big one, a really huge one that I wanted to go to, but unfortunately the timing was off and uh, we were away on a family trip when, um, when it actually was held. Uh, but there was one just a town over uh, that did have a small one. Um, this is about a week or so back. I took my son. Uh, he got some books too. I had originally planned to have him do a haul with me and show his stuff, but it took so long to get to filming and all of his books were already mixed in with his other ones. So it's just going to be me. And I'm just going to go through these very quickly. Um, none of these I have read before, uh, but if, you know, anybody has, I'd certainly be interested to hear your comments. Um, so the first thing that I picked up uh, is actually a little bit odder, uh, but published in 1963, and this is Poems from Black Africa, uh, edited by Langston Hughes. Um, <clears throat> and I like a lot of Langston Hughes's poetry. Uh, you know, of the Harlem Renaissance poets, he is my favorite. And I bought this especially in anticipation of an event um, a booktube event that will be going on in January and uh, hosted, um, hopefully it's all still going to happen, uh, it'll be hosted by Mark over at Book Time with Elvis um, this past spring into summer. He had uh, done a great job hosting the Euro Reading Challenge uh, where each participant was assigned a country that participated in the Euro Championships, the soccer tournament, uh, and we read a book from or about that country and we followed that country through the tournament and if the country was knocked out we would read something from or, or if they were just even defeated we would read something from or about the country that defeated them and we just kind of followed it through the tournament and it was a great time and uh, the plan is to do that again in January for the Africa Cup of Nations tournament um, so you know once again being randomly assigned an African country and doing the same process, reading stuff from or about that country. Uh, so I got this in anticipation of that. Um, this has poems from, uh, let me see some here, um, Ethiopia, uh, Sierra Leone, Madagascar, uh, Nigeria, Kenya, Senegal, Mozambique, South Africa, Liberia. Um, so it, it'll give me something to kind of to dip into and to uh, read through January. Um, so that's really why I picked it up for the tournament. Um, and I'm interested to read Langston Hughes's introduction as well to the whole thing. Um, so that's the first thing. Then I picked up two Michael Crichton books uh, that I've been wanting to read. Um, the only Michael Crichton book that I have read so far is Eaters of the Dead. And I enjoyed that. It's been a long time since I read it. Uh, I've always had this one recommended to me. So Timeline, his time traveling book, uh, which uh, modern day, I think, scientists and archaeologists, right? Uh, they go back in time, uh, I think to medieval France or something. Um, yeah, I, I remember seeing the movie uh, adaptation that came out and not being terribly impressed, but I've been told that the book is way better than the movie. Um, so this is one that I'll, I'll certainly look forward to. And I also picked up a copy of Dragon's Teeth, or Dragon Teeth. Uh, which I think was published uh, after his death. And, um, you know, I, I'm not <laughs> all too schooled in Michael Crichton. Uh, I remember when I first heard about this book, I thought it was actually just about dragons or something. I had no idea. Uh, and then it slowly dawned on me <laughs> and heard about it, that it's actually about uh, paleontology. And um, it takes place in 19th century, I believe, right? Yeah, late 19th century America. Uh, looking for dinosaur bones and everything. Um, so... That sounded way more interesting to me, actually. Um, I do like fantasy, but uh, uh, this sounded pretty extraordinary. Um, and I've heard good things about it, so Dragon Teeth. And then I picked up uh, some Stephen King hardcovers. Um, I do plan to read more Stephen King. Uh, 
the first two things I picked up were st short story collections. Um, so this one is just after sunset. Uh, I've read some Stephen King, um, and I do plan to get through a lot more of his stuff. Um, I know people like uh, some great booktubers like uh, Michael K. Vaughn and A.J. Dunn. Uh, they're committed to reading, I think, every single Stephen King book. Um, I'm not going to go that far, but I do want to read, uh, especially the the horror big hitters, um, you know, and I figure the short story collections as well. Uh, so I don't know anything about the stories in this one. So you got Just After Sunset and also uh, The Bizarre Bad Dreams, um, which said, I don't think I'm, I know much about any of these stories at all that are in these ones. Um, they don't really look familiar to me as far as the titles go. So two short story collections. And I also picked up uh, Mr. Mercedes, um, which I know uh, kind of carries into other novels afterwards. That um, This kind of begins a certain uh, trend in some of his writing. Uh, so it seemed like one of the essential ones to pick up. And all these books that I'm picking up, you know, uh, pretty decent edition hardcovers, um, or, you know, good condition. <clears throat> Maybe, you know, a dollar, two dollars most for all these things. Um, so, yeah, it's a pretty cheap haul, actually. And the last two things that I got, the first one, uh, <laughs> I picked up uh, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. Uh, I'd always thought about maybe picking this up and trying it out, and I kind of, you know, always ended up leaving it at the bookstore. Uh, then I found, you know, a really good condition hardcover for like a buck. I figured, yeah, I might as well grab it. Um, I also have the same author, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, which I haven't read yet, but uh, I I had originally planned to read that for this past Jane Austen July. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't really able to participate in Jane Austen July. I had too much other reading, uh, but next year I do hope to participate and uh, finally read Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, and maybe I'll follow it up with this one. And finally, uh, another author that I've been wanting to read more of uh, and to get into and that is uh, Sarah Waters, The Paying Guest. Um, you know, I, I don't have any other Sarah Waters books yet. Uh, I have heard that she has terrific historical fiction um, and is a very good writer. Uh, so she's always been on my radar. So when I saw this, again, a really nice copy, uh, <laughs> hardcover for, you know, maybe a, only a buck or two, I had to grab it and pick it up. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this is the book to start with with Sarah Waters, or if I should go for Tipping the Velvet or Fingersmith or something like that. Um, I do also want to pick up uh, The Little Stranger. Um, I did like the uh, movie adaptation that came out a couple years ago about that one. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the haul. Um, pretty decent amount of books, uh, all hardcover. Usually when I go to these book sales, I end up walking out with uh, history books and usually Star Trek mass market paperbacks. Um, to pick up fiction like this is actually not common for me. Uh, but they didn't have much in the way of history, and they didn't have any mass market Star Trek paperbacks. Uh, so I went to the fiction section, and I spent time there, and this is what I walked out with. And I'm pretty happy with uh, these selections. So, um, yeah, uh, if you have anything that you can let me know about any of these books, I'd be appreciate hearing it. All right? Thank you, BookTube.